Do you really need the iPhone 13 Pro camera and is it as good as Apple are hyping it up to be? In this video, I wanna share my experience with the new iPhone 13 Pro as someone who takes photos and makes videos for a living. This is my honest iPhone 13 Pro camera review. Generally speaking, all three cameras are great. The consistency between ultra wide, the primary lens and the telephoto is really nice to see. The primary lens being the best quality lens, then in second place, I would put the ultra wide lens. You can get some nice quality shots images with the ultra wide but it's not quite as tack sharp and doesn't produce the nice quality that the primary lens does and then in third place i'm going to say the telephoto obviously when you start zooming into times three times five times ten you are of course going to lose detail and quality but at times three the photos do look really sharp and off the bat i'm pretty impressed with it if you are zooming into like times ten um i just wouldn't recommend it because it's not good me and my friend actually held up our cameras and he has a samsung s21 ultra and his times ten zoom looked a lot nicer than the Times 10 zoom on the 13 Pro. My opinion on that is that I won't ever use the Times 10 zoom. I never really want to zoom in that much with an iPhone. So I'll just carry on not using Times 10 zoom. But if zoom in Times 10 into the distance was something you were looking for from a phone, then the iPhone might let you down. One of my favorite things about the iPhone 13 Pro is the regular depth of field that the primary lens provides. So if you're just taking a photo of something in front of you or your friend, when it blurs the background out using the regular lens, I think it's fantastic. It's clean, it's sharp and it's not over the top. I think for regular people like Uncle Steve who's just taken a photo on the street because he's seen a cute dog or something, he should take that photo with the primary lens. He shouldn't use portrait, he shouldn't use ultra wide, he shouldn't use times three. Just the regular lens, the regular primary lens that the iPhone provides will definitely get the best image quality. Unlike portrait mode, which has never really been great. I think the regular depth of field from the primary lens far outweighs the pros of having that super shallow depth of field from the portrait lens. The portrait lens on an iPhone has never really been that good and the same this year with the iPhone 13 Pro. I definitely won't be taking photos in portrait mode. I just think it looks a bit fake and plastic. It doesn't provide that nice shallow depth of field that you might see out of a camera. And obviously the phone is just using software to try and replicate the depth of field from a camera. Similar to cinematic mode, which we'll talk about later on in this video, but portrait mode, I don't think anyone should be using it. I don't think it works that well. And I'm surprised that the 13 Pro hasn't done a better job at portrait, but I just think, I just think generally speaking, people should avoid using portrait if they just want a regular photo. The ultra wide lens was phenomenal. I had so much fun using this lens out when I was in London doing some street photography. Normally if I'm doing some street photography, I've got my 16 to 35 mil wide lens and I love shooting super wide perspectives of architecture, urban photography. I love getting low to the floor and just getting these grand landscapes in shot. I could do exactly that with the ultra wide on the iPhone 13 Pro. If I wanted to get good wide angle photos, I would need to bring my camera but of course I don't want to have to bring my camera lenses my camera my camera bag if I'm just going out for a regular day in the city the fact that I can take ultra wide angle photos on my phone now is yeah I'm, I'm excited about it because I now know that if I want to get a shot where I want a super wide perspective the phone is going to deliver and uh, yeah there's big props to Apple for this year's ultra wide it looks fantastic alongside the ultra wide is the macro so if you get super close I think it's about two centimeters or something then the ultra wide will switch over to the macro lens now my personal opinion on the macro lens is that is it a little bit gimmicky I don't walk around day to day with my phone hoping to take photos photos of things super up close to get all those little details. It's cool that the feature's there. You may have seen people take super close up photos of their eyeballs because um, it's just a cool thing to do. And the photos do look pretty cool, but are we really gonna be using macro feature day today? It's cool that it's on the phone, but I probably won't be using it. Speaking about the macro lens more specifically, you don't actually have any control over when it activates. So if you're using the ultra wide angle lens and you get super close to something, then it will automatically switch over to macro and then automatically switch back when you move away from something. So I think that's a little bit annoying. I wish we had more control over the feature. I wish we had a separate tab that we could click on and it would turn the phone into a macro lens because I know that I've been trying to get some ultra wide perspectives and then maybe I just get a little bit close to something and it switches to macro and I didn't want it to go to macro and then it's just an inconvenient feature because I probably won't be using the macro lens but if I ever accidentally get too close to something, I've got no control over it and blah, blah, blah. So if we just had control over the macro feature, that would probably you know, make it a lot easier to use, but it is what it is, we'll just have to deal with it. In the new iPhone 13 phones, right the way from the mini all the way to the Pro Max, you have photography styles, which is new this year. I think it's a nice touch to be fair, taking photos in rich contrast does add a little bit of punch and a little bit of a style to your images. I won't be doing this if you wanted to edit your photos. I would prefer to take a photo just in default 
neutral mode and then you can go ahead and add whatever contrast you want if you wanted to edit your photos. But if you didn't and you simply just wanted a warmer vibe to your images, then click the warm style. If you wanted a vibrant vibe to your images, then click the vibrant style. So for people that don't take their photography too seriously, but do want to start taking some better images or more appealing images, then choosing a photography style like rich contrast or warm vibe or one of those styles is a, is a pretty cool thing to do. And I'm sure some people will make use of that feature. Let's talk about low light and night photography with this thing because it is amazing. I shot around London at night time to do some architecture, urban street photography, and I was super impressed, especially shooting in pro raw. The files were super versatile. When I brought the files into Lightroom, I had lots of room to edit with the shadows, the blacks, the highlights. There was a lot more room for editing compared to previous iPhone files when I've tried editing them. I really could tell a difference when I was editing a non-RAW file, just a simple JPEG, compared to editing a DNG, a Pro RAW file. The Pro RAW file really was versatile to use in Lightroom. My opinion on the image quality is probably being a little bit biased coming from the fact that I had an iPhone XS before this. So I was three years, four years away from the newest technology. So my iPhone X, in low light, wasn't groundbreaking, it was all right, but nothing compared to the iPhone 13. So I might be a little bit more impressed by the quality of night photography, low light photography, and the raw files coming out of the phone, more so than someone that's probably just upgraded from the iPhone 12. Can you really tell the difference? Probably not. Lens flares, we've got to talk about it, and I don't know why this hasn't been fixed, but with both video and photo, you get this little green UFO lens flare. The way Apple talk about their cameras each year when the new iPhone comes out, they hype it up a little bit too much because those little things like the green lens flare that's on both photo and video modes, it's distracting, it's annoying, you can tell it's an iPhone. It's another differentiator when someone thinks, should I buy a camera or should I buy a phone? You don't get stuff like that when you buy a camera. You still get that green weird lens flare when you buy a phone. It's when you shoot directly into the light or like a lamppost, mainly artificial light, or you're shooting at nighttime, it's just weird. Obviously iPhones are more software based. It's not the same technology that's in, you know, a digital camera. I don't know how to put this scientifically, but just get rid of the green lens flare, like just fix it. You're like one of the biggest companies in the world and I still point my phone at a lamppost and it looks disgusting. So that's probably the most negative thing I'm gonna mention in this video, the lens flares. They're weird, just, I wish that didn't happen. <laughs> All right, the camera bump is pretty crazy and it's a little bit too beefy if I'm being honest. It rocks when you put it down on the desk and you just have it flat. It actually doesn't sit flush. Even when you put a case on, it's a little bit better, but it still rocks from side to side. I guess one of the downsides of having such a good camera on your phone is that it needs to be physically bigger and I'm not a professional engineer. I have no idea what Apple's design process is, but clearly they couldn't make it smaller. So I guess we just have to deal with it. A big one for me this year, and I think this is my opinion based off the fact that I make videos and take photos for a living, but why do we not have like a professional manual mode on these things? I wanna be able to change the ISO, the aperture and the shutter speed in the camera I don't want to have to use an external third party app to be able to change the settings. When you take a photo on your phone, everything's automatic. Why don't they just add another option for people to just be a little bit more specific with the things that they're creating? The phone creates nice pro raw files. We know that. So why don't you just let me correct how I want to expose the image? But I would really love a manual photography mode and a video mode instead of having to use a third party app. With that being said, the reason I think this isn't such a big deal is most people that take photos on their phones want the phone to do everything for them. So they're probably gonna want to stay in automatic mode. People that take photos don't wanna have to faff around with all the manual settings, but uh, maybe just an option would have been nice. And I imagine 98% of iPhone users would avoid it, but I don't know, I, I would probably enjoy using manual mode. Let's talk cinematic mode. It's not quite there yet. It's amazing tech, don't get me wrong. I don't wanna come across like I'm complaining. And the fact that cinematic mode is available on a camera and a phone that literally fits in your pocket, it's impressive. But personally, if I'm shooting anything that's remotely cinematic, I'm definitely using my camera and I am not using the phone. Not anytime soon, anyway. My thoughts are very similar to portrait mode. The depth of field is fake. It makes things look plastic. It doesn't look sharp. It doesn't look polished. You get this weird halo in around people's hair and faces. I just think maybe they've released it too soon, or if people wanna create cinematic video, then just use the regular video feature 
I don't think this weird depth of field bokeh effect is needed. Maybe this would be good, however, for just mobile phone creators, so TikTokers, Instagram. If they want that depth of field, then they have that option and the iPhone cinematic mode will produce it. But from the little tests I did with it, um, no, <laughs> I don't really like it that much. It looks a little bit too fake and yeah, just a bit weird at the moment. Now let's talk about ProRes, which is just a higher quality video codec, which a lot of professional cameras use and it's much easier to edit with. To put it simply, you're getting a much better quality file. That is when we actually get to use it. Right now, the iPhone 13 Pro doesn't film in ProRes. I don't know when they're gonna release that. I don't know why they would release a phone with such a you know, potentially exciting feature and it's not available yet but um, hopefully in the coming weeks and the coming months, we will be able to film video in ProRes. Only if you have the 256 gigabyte version, if you have the 128 gig phone, then you can't do it, probably to do with file size and storage on your phone, so yeah. As a photographer myself, would I recommend this phone for beginner photographers? Yes, it's hard to ignore the fact that it creates good quality video and photos. It's actually hard to take bad photos with it because the phone does everything automatically for you. Eight times out of 10, nine times out of 10, you're gonna get a good quality image. But if you are questioning, do I spend a thousand pounds on a camera or do I spend a thousand pounds on a phone to improve my photography, I would suggest getting the camera. Like I said, the phone does everything almost for you. I do believe that robs you the opportunity of learning the basics. Understanding how to correctly expose an image using aperture ISO shutter speed. You're not gonna get any of that knowledge from using your phone. Do you want to just take photos and make videos on your phone and remain at that level of production quality forever? Maybe you're not bothered. Maybe that's good enough for TikTok. Maybe that's good enough for Instagram. And it probably is. So with that being said, I probably wouldn't recommend getting a camera. You don't need to learn everything I've just mentioned. But if you do wanna take your photography and videography production quality to the next level, you're thinking about making it your full-time career, then only you can answer that question. I think it's pretty obvious. Do you get a phone or do you get a camera, in my opinion? A camera day in day out. If you are a beginner photographer watching this and you're curious to what cameras I could maybe suggest, things like the Canon M50, the Sony a6000, Canon 700D, Canon 80D, those like beginner entry level cameras should put you in a good place to start. A massive thing that the iPhone has as an advantage here and probably most mobile phones nowadays actually is the fact that they're so accessible for anyone to start making content and this might be your first gateway into content creation. You're going to take your first photos on a phone, you're going to make your first videos on your phone. And I love the fact that if you are doing those, if you are a beginner and you're getting started on a phone, it's a great place to start. The camera on the iPhone 13 Pro is probably better quality than some of the photos you're gonna get out of a 10 year old DSLR. However, the DSLR that's 10 years old will provide you with more experience and understanding of how actual cameras work. The phone won't do that. But the fact that anyone that takes a photo on the phone is probably gonna take a good image. I think that's underrated. I think it's very obvious, but I think it's underrated. And you could give a phone to a six-year-old and they could take an amazing photo. It's as simple as that. Okay, let's bring things back down to earth here. Obviously, I'm making the iPhone 13 Pro video because the iPhone's trending right now. This month, everyone's talking about the iPhone. Loads of YouTubers are making iPhone videos. But iPhone cameras have been good for years. Probably since the iPhone 10, they've been great the iPhone 11, 12, and now 13. Are they really that much difference? If I take photos on this phone and then my friend takes photos on his iPhone 11, can we really tell the difference? Probably not. I could probably make this video next year and it would sound very similar. And I could have made a video about the iPhone 12 and it probably would have sounded like this video. Do we really need to upgrade our phones every year? No, we definitely don't. But um, I think I mentioned earlier, I came from the iPhone 10, So even just having ultra wide lens is, uh, is a pro for me because I didn't have that on my previous phone. So I think your opinion and your perspective and your experience on the iPhone 13 Pro, it depends where you're at. What phone was you using before? Where have you upgraded from? If you've upgraded from the 12, then are you really gonna tell any difference? Thanks for sticking around this far into the video. And I just wanna give a little plug to my online course. If you're interested in improving your photography, bringing your city to life, specifically your street photography, I break down the entire process from start to finish, understanding compositions, what to look out for, camera settings, etc. 30 unique exclusive videos from me to help you improve your photography. I'll leave a link in the description. If you're interested in the online guide, that would be massively appreciated. And I'll see you within the course. If you're not interested in the online guide, then uh, this is the end of the video and you don't need to be watching anymore. So yeah, thanks for watching. <laughs> 
leave a like, leave a comment, and uh, I'll see you guys very soon. Peace. Thank you.